good morning, afternoon or evening or whatever time of day it happens to be where you're watching this. Uh, my name is Jussi Vakkanen. I'm the project lead for the Mesen build system. And this is going to be a, like a rough overview of how uh, Mesen is, how, how it's used and, and what, what kind of people are using it and what projects could be used for. So let's start uh, with a very simple question. So what is Mesen build system in a simple nutshell? Well, it's a language independent build system focusing on usability and interoperability. So our aim is to support potentially all languages in the world. Uh, the most common ones are best supported are currently things like C, C++, Fortran, uh, Java, C Sharp, uh, Rust support, and so on. Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's not just like a thing that we made up and there's no one no one actually using it. It's used quite heavily, in fact. So one of the, the main big users is a Mesa 3D, which is the 3D graphics stack of Linux. Uh, so this is where you get your OpenGL and Vulkan drivers and all the support code that goes with that. Uh, the systemd, which is the, the, the project, uh, no, the process zero on most Linux systems these days. Uh, most of parts of GNOME desktop, which are made in uh, native code, are built with uh, Mesen, so things like glib and gtk and all those other, other things. Uh, interestingly for Python, so, so SciPy has recently changed from their custom makefile based uh, this tool based uh, build system into Mesen and, and I've been told that uh, NumPy is also considering the change but, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, in addition to that it's, it's used inside of many corporations. Now, sadly, I don't have a, a proper references for these, but there are uh, several products which have been shipped uh, all over the world. Some with like large numbers of users that are, are built with Mesen. So let's look at the basic design then. Um, at, at this very core, uh, Mesen is just a DSL for describing your build. So you have your sources, you have your targets, and the way they depend on each other, and so on, and, and you express those. And this is not Turing complete, so you, there, there are no functions, or macros, or any of the other things, uh, and you can't define your own. And this is by design. Uh, it will never be Turing complete. Uh, this is for simplicity, and, and because uh, we feel that the the things that people typically use Turing completeness for could be can be sold in, in better ways. So let's look at a simple example of how a build file would look like. So uh, we start by defining a project, which is called my prog in this case, and use a single C file. Uh, and then we have uh, a GTK3, uh, so a, a GUI toolkit to be uh, used on, on Win, uh, Linux at least. And we say that we have a dependency and want to have, have this. And then we define an executable with a name and a single source file. And then we tell it that this is the dependency that we want to use. And this is it. This, this is pretty much all you need to build a thing. And then there's lots of things which you don't have to care about, just like uh, debug flags or optimizations or, or how to enable thread sanitizers or radar sanitizers or any of those things because there's, there's built-in support for all of that uh, and you can just use that. Uh, but let's take a look at deeper look at, at what, what this actually means. So we have a dependency for, for doing something. So what does it actually do? So uh, it specifies that uh, what it, dependency and the name and it says that this is what I need. And it specifically doesn't say where it should come from because uh, the build file itself for any project typically doesn't care what, where dependencies come from and how they're organized. It's, they just say, I just need this, make it happen. Uh, and this means that we can switch between dependencies that are provided by the system, as uh, like typical Linux desktops, and others where you built everything from source by yourself. And this is a big difference uh, compared to most other build systems because uh, typically, they, they either um, want you to always use 
system dependencies or always use uh, things that you built yourself from source from scratch every time and the the mesen is very different in this case that it, it supports both of these use cases in a transparent way and and most importantly your built definition file remains the same regardless of where your dependencies come from and this makes it very easy to write write things that compose uh, but this is a, a Python uh, conference, so let's let's look at building a Python module. So uh, it's the same thing. You have PyMod, and then you have C, uh, and then uh, you, uh, this is similar works similar the way to import works. So the the core of Meson is quite small, and the additional functionality is in modules that you can import and use. And in this case, uh, we want the Python module to find the current installation of Python that's been, it's being used on the system as it is. Uh, this is like auto detection. If, if you have special needs, you can tell it how it should look things up. And then uh, one way, when we have the dependency, then we can just say, uh, oh, sorry, when we have the installation object, then we can say, give me a dependency of uh, all, all the things I would need to compile things against you. And then uh, there's also this extension module, uh, which encapsulates all the things that you need to build the Python pro uh, module, uh, things like naming and so on. And you give it the source, and you have a dependency, and then you say that you want to install it. So, so and again, this is all that you need to do. And the build setup is the same. It's just configure, build, install, and then you're done. Um, and the, perhaps the biggest question people keep asking us is that why is it not Turing complete and uh, typically what they want is something like like scons where you have just the python library that you can use or or then something like cmake which has functions and things and you can program anything that you want by yourself uh, for, for the exact thing that you need and the main main reason against that is this uh this law of programmers is that the problem with programmers is that if you give them a chance, they will start programming. And what, is it, what does it mean? So let's look at, it, at an example. Um, uh, on SciPy, when you build it, uh, if you're using Windows, then you need to combine Visual Studio and G Fortran. Because uh, the uh, Python thing is called, is, uh, is called <laughs> It's, pro it's built with Visual Studio, and um, SciPy has a lot of Fortran code, and Visual Studio doesn't ship with the Fortran compiler, so you need to use Fortran. And these are two completely different compiler tool chains, uh, and, and making them work together is a bit tricky. And uh, I'm told that the uh, old, old build system had lots of custom magic stuff in it, uh, and, and it was quite unreadable as a result. So. Uh, in Meson, what happened was that uh, being able to combine G4Tran and Visual Studio is a thing that's generally needed. Uh, there are projects other than, than SciPy who are going to need it. So it makes sense for us to do it once properly inside Meson source code, and then anyone can use that. And they can just say, here are my Fortran sources, here are my C sources, make stuff happen. And this makes the build definition simple. Any project that mixes that, those those two languages will work. And this is the core philosophy: is that you don't hack things until they work. You fix them properly. Uh, and if your build definition thing is Turing complete, this tends to not happen. Uh, and and this is more work upfront, but in, in the long term, there's a lot less effort because once you make something work. With everything else together, in, and it's all in, in upstream and integrated, and there's test and all that sort of good stuff, then you don't have to think about that ever again. Unless there are bugs, but you know. Uh, another thing which, which we take quite seriously is that uh, we need to have minimal dependencies because uh, we need to be able to bootstrap an operating system and so on. Uh, so Meson is implemented in pure Python. 
and it goes a bit further because we are not allowed to depend on anything outside of the Python standard library. So there are no PIF packages that you need to install. Uh, all you need is, is Python 3 and that's all. That's everything that you need. Uh, we do use one external tool uh, which is called Ninja which does the actual invocation of the compiler. It does it very well. So it's very simple. It's portable C++, uh, very low maintenance, very low effort, uh, high, very portable. So it's, it's the uh, dependency set is quite small. But for some people, this is, this is a bit too much. Um, so there is a plain C implementation of Mesenna. It's called Moore. Uh, it's not uh, feature complete, but does most of the things Mesen does. And there's also a plain C version of Ninja called Samurai. So if you are in an environment where you have to uh, bootstrap your thing and you're not allowed to depend on anything that's, that is not plain C, then you can still use that. Use this version and it should work. But uh, even that is too much for some use cases, if you're doing cross compilation like embedded development. So uh, in that case, you can't run anything on the target machine. You have to cross compile everything. So we support cross compilation natively, works just fine. And uh, including the case where you compile a source code generator, which you have to compile with a different compiler because you need to run it to generate more source, which you then compile in the final result. So this just works out of the box uh, and has, has worked for, from from back the earliest days when the cross compilation was added. This was an explicit design goal. Uh, another thing that we have uh, is a dependency manager because like every every build system is going to have one of those. Ours is called wrap and then wrapdb is the database of packages and uh, the command to install stuff is here. So basically what this does is that it contacts the, the internet and, and downloads from the wrapdb uh, things that you need to build a PNG. Uh, there are some use cases where you, you need to be able to say, no, you are not allowed to go to the internet under any circumstances. So there are built-in functions functionality for that to prevent you ever going to the internet, if that's what you want. Uh, and even more importantly, uh, even though we have the our own uh, dependency database, uh, it's not the only one. So if you want, if you have a company and you want to run your own thing uh, all within your own firewall, you can do that. Just it's supported. No problem with that. Just just go ahead. Um, okay. So and then uh, on closing, uh, one question which I get asked every now and then, which is kind of interesting as well, is that uh, could you use Mesen as a build system for Python itself? Uh, and uh, technically, yes, um, I've already done it. Uh, I had a presentation at EuroPython a few years ago. Uh, it, was, it was there as an example. But this is more about like a policy question and decision on like, like how, what are the uh, project requirements and desires for, for support and so on. So, so this is not something that we can actually uh, d uh, make a decision on. So, but but uh, if it turns out that if you want to do this and there's any sorts of features missing from Mesen upstream, uh, let us know. We'll be, we'll be glad to implement them. Um, okay, so, but uh, if you look at the, the way Python currently builds, is that there are multiple build systems already. So there's the Visual Studio generator and there seems to be some sort of Xcode thing. I'm not entirely sure about that. And there's the auto tools and so on. So you could in, uh, cut that down to two. So if you used Mesen for the common platforms and then uh, the classic auto tools for the uh, vintage operating systems that, that have trouble with, with uh, newer dependencies. So uh, it would still be smaller number than it currently, uh, but uh, the people who are up to date and have modern things could use newer tools and the, the maintenance burden of, of these uh, other operating systems would then uh, be more on those people who actually have to uh, or like responsible for maintaining them and then will get the benefit. So it's kind of like splits the work nicely. Oh, so oh, sorry, there was a bit of a problem with the uh, these slides. But anyway, 
um, that's pretty much all I had. Um, enjoy the rest of the summit, uh, and I'll be at the Q&A uh, later in, on in this week. Thank you.